Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. Very biased collection, very, very biased collection. Um, today I would like to try something new, not really today, but uh, whatever time it is for you, I'm trying something new. New in the sense that I have tried it before, certainly several other people have done it. Uh, so in that sense, it's not really new. But anyway, um, I was actually thinking about making a video about the monster group and how to construct the monster group. And it turns out that I think that's really difficult to put in a time like 10 minute video. So I kind of split this into Kachmudi algebras, what are sporadic groups, and then what is mon mon the monster group. Because essentially the monster is a certain type of group that appears as an automorphism of a certain type of Kachmudi algebra. Yeah. And in order to kind of make that understandable for me, and hopefully for you as well, I decided to put that in three videos. So we go this, uh, what are Kashmuri algebras uh, emerging from matrices. Yeah, so really just a story about matrices today. And um, yeah, then then we I do some sporadic groups and then the moonshine. Um, and that's all kind of very enjoyable without what, so kind of watching those videos um, just one by one is already kind of very enjoyable, hopefully. That's at least the plan. Okay, today, catch body algebra. We don't need to know anything about monsters or sporadic groups or whatever you want. We just don't need to know about that. And that's totally fine. So the picture I have in mind is Galois theory. So Galois theory, so Galois came up with this idea, it kind of was around in some sense already, but to kind of um, put discrete symmetries in a mathematical structure. So the Galois group is really just the study of symmetries of groups of polynomial equations. So that's the Galois group. Galois came up with this, and it's just really, really powerful. And hopefully, you've seen it at one point in your life, because a lot of kind of departments are cutting the down Galois theory. I hope you've seen that. Um, because then Lee, a little bit later, so Galois 1800, let's say 1820, Lee, let's say 1860. So let's let me just write down some numbers, maybe 1820. This is rough, but just very rough. And uh, 1860 for Lee, or later. So this is supposed to be a six. Uh, or later, Lee came up with this idea. Okay, maybe we don't want to study polynomial equations. Polynomial equations are fantastic, but maybe we understand them now. And we should rather study um, equations like differential equations. Because, okay, symmetries of differential equations. Because nobody has done that. And there should be an analog group acting on those symmetries. And Lee gave some answer. And the, the, the groups that come out are nowadays known as Lee groups. And they have infinitesimal versions, which I go to in a second, which are called Lie algebras. But really, the Lie groups is just loose Galois theory. If you want, because you are now you're looking at differential equations instead of discrete uh, polynomial equations, right? Continuous symmetries instead of uh, discrete symmetries. That's kind of the difference between the finite groups you see in Galois theory and the smooth groups you see in, in Lie theory. It's kind of this difference. And well, Lee also discovered that if you have a, a Lee group, which I really would like to think of a smooth object like a sphere, um, then you can look at the tangent planes at certain points. And the space of tangent planes, if you just think about that, actually has another algebraic structure, which Lee discovered and well, kind of renamed if you want. And it's it's a Lee bracket. And it gives the, 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 the tangent space the structure of a Lie algebra. So the smooth object, the group, kind of has a tangent, which is in the algebra, and it's kind of the first order approximation because that's what a tangent does, right? If you just think of uh, like the easy type of an example of a tangent, like you have some curve and you have a tangent, which is now something like the very bad tangent. This is a horrible tangent. Let me at least make it tangent um, along the point. And it's the first order approximation of the graph at that point, right? So in the, the Lie algebra is in some sense the first order approximation of those discrete symmetries coming from a Lie group. And the key formula relating them is uh, one of them has a determinant and one of them has a trace. For example, if you have the Lie group SL2, which is really determinant one, it has an of, of, as a, of two by two matrices with determinant one, it's associated Lie algebra, so it's associated tangent space you could compute is the group of matrices with trace zero. So determinant one turns into trace zero because e to the zero is one. That's essentially what happens. e to the zero 
is one. That's essentially what happens, and that's why the trace condition uh, turns into a determinant one. So the relationship between uh, the Lie group and the Lie algebra is exactly like the relationship between the tangent and its parent graph. One of them is obtained by taking the derivative, and the other one is obtained well, in the other direction. You take an integral, and that's essentially what you do. Anyway, those Lie algebras are kind of those, these well-known order one approximation of continuous Galois theory. And kind of really surprising in some sense, the order one approximation, they like work really well, like extremely well. Um, they're not perfect, but they work like, like really, really, really well in some sense. Okay, so and this opens the study of Lie algebras. So instead of studying the smooth object, you can study um, the discrete object, or sorry, the, the order one approximation, the Lie algebra. And that all happened already roughly with the work of Lee. So Lee already knew that uh, a long, long time ago. Okay. And then people came up was much later with the idea to associate a root system or a matrix to every such Lie algebra. Um, in the form, to every nice enough Lie algebra, you can always hook up some crazy Lie algebras. Uh, anyway, they can be encoded by a matrix, which is just the Catan matrix, a matrix with certain properties. I just wrote down the Catan matrix for as a SLN family. And I just there's certain matrices. And right, from these certain matrices, they, they completely encode the Lie algebra itself, right? So you can recover the Lie algebra from the matrix, and from the Lie algebra, you can get the matrix. Fine. So people ask, and there's a certain type of matrix, it's a very special matrix, it turned out. So people ask, in particular, uh, Kachin Moody asks the question, what can you do if you allow more general matrices? Do you get still something that is mathematically interesting? And the answer is yes, you do. You get those Kachin Moody algebras. Yeah. So um, Kachin Moody algebras are just algebras associated to a matrix, very similar to the one for the leak algebras, um, but kind of more generally matrices. And they have generalized Catan matrix. And the point is that it's really, really, really similar to the classical Lie algebras that every mathematician at one point in their life likes, um, and then hates, and then likes, and then hates, and then likes, I guess. Anyway, so they're a generalization of that picture, and it satisfies almost the same properties, which is kind of uh, really, really, really right. So they, they can be given the generators and relations presentation from the matrix, so absolutely completely explicit. And they generalize Lie algebras. So the let me just lie, the continuous symmetries generalizing Galois theory. And they still have essentially the same properties. You can write down character formulas, the representation theory is almost the same and everything. And then Kutch and Moody kind of put that very far. Particular Kutch, so that's a famous book by Kutch, Infinite Dimensional Lie algebras, or something like that. Um, and maybe it's a description. And like it's, it's ridiculous how far you could push that. Just following the analogy of SLN, if you want. So you just do the SL, SL2, if you want. You just do the SL2 story, and it just pushes it very far. And the only difference is to the classical Lie algebra is that you now allow a more general matrix as an input, so you get more general generators and relations. And catch Moody Borchev's algebra, so the one for the for moonshine for the monster, will be one of those those types, but with an even more general matrix essentially. Essentially, that's what it is. So I stole this from the book, as you can see, that funny line break, uh, page break in my picture. And this is a book, Infinite Dimension on the Algebras from Kutch, which is like wonderful, wonderful. And, and really, you can do so much with these algebras. So they have the same type of character formulas, just a, a character formula you write down in terms of the matrix, if you want. Um, and then there's a famous exercise in Kutch uh, that I just pulled up here. Uh, just using the derived the character formulas you get from um, from from the matrix, which I usually call the vile catch formula. So everything has this associated, and you just a formula. And if you plot in so two, so if you plot in the SL two example or F I SL two if you want, you can from that formula recover like a, a zillions of very famous kind of qualities in number theory that look essentially completely insane. So objective, this is kind of a really fun exercise. You open the book, and exercise is proofs the following famous formulas. Gauss, uh, Jacobi, Gauss, Euler, Gauss. <laughs> just extremely fantastic. Just from the general theory, it generalizes 
uh, the theory of Lie algebras. You can just do it from the general theory. The exercise is not difficult if you have read the part before where touch derives the via touch formulas for um, those uh, Lie algebras. And this works for any touch Moody algebra. And what we are using here for those famous formulas, I should give it a different color, for those famous formulas, we're really just using acid too. This was a bad choice of color as well. When we read, we are just using SL2. So many well-known formulas follow, follow just from SL2, and you have this whole zoo of generalized uh, Lie algebras associated to every matrix where you can still uh, play the same type of game. So if you're bored, I recommend this exercise in Katja's book, uh, linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.